All right. Well, I may have been um, you know, pretty late to the first three discussions, but I'm one of the first people on this one. And I must say that I found this debate uh, in discussion really to be particularly intriguing. Now, I know it was between the you know the two people there, but uh, one person who I think would have really had a kick with this, and I'm unsure if he was contemporary and alive at the time, is uh, Paolo Freire. And you know, start off my uh, discussion by talking about uh, or Wafe, I, I believe is how you pronounce the guy's name, which reminds me a little too much of um, Interview with a Vampire. But um, the long and the short of it is, we um, we see that Wafe talks about this concept of space and you know how essentially architectural or otherwise design uh, has a lot to do with how society is. Now, fundamentally, if you look at the educational system, especially the K through 12, and I, I taught high school at El Paso this last year, so got some experience with that. If you look with the educational system, what you can see is that the space and the way the school buildings are designed really says a lot about what they're doing there. Now, Freire in Pedagogy of the Oppressed talks about you know, this concept of dehumanization, which I believe is interchangeable with what these uh, two talk about with the concept of alienation. Essentially the idea that we're not treating people as people, but simply as objects or something else. They're not really being able to live up to the full potential. Now what Freire talks about is the fact that the Western system of education uses something he calls the banking model, where we treat students not as people, but almost essentially as hard drives that we deposit information to. And I forget the name of the guy who did the lecture, but uh, I saw this um, several months ago on, uh, I want to say it was RS Animate, and the lecture he was talking about was the idea that essentially uh, the modern educational building or you know high school building is structured the same way as we had structured a factory, say in the you know, Industrial Revolution, which is around the time where we really started advancing the, the concept of education as being something about getting a job, and that's exactly what they're designed for. If we look at the, the modern space of, say, a public high school, it looks much more like, say, an industrial factory than it would, say, you know, college. And the reason for that is because the goal is not particularly uh, the idea of making these students educated or teaching them to think, especially in Texas where the dominant Republican Party ha actually has it in their party platform that they oppose the teaching of critical thinking skills. They simply want students learning, you know, hard, fast knowledge. And that's exactly what the system is designed for, not to really educate these students, but to graduate them. And if you look at the model and how the space is designed, everything seems to uh, really mirror uh, this concept of industrial revolution, or, you know, industrial factory design. You have, you know, a diversification of labor. The science teachers are in the science wing. They're segregated off from the English teachers and communication teachers in the English wing. We were segregated off from the fine arts teachers, you know, choir and you know, music and art. All these people have different areas and different, you know, focus areas. And so students will go essentially down an assembly line during the day. They'll have English in first period. Then a bell will ring and they'll move down the uh, hallway assembly line from their English classroom to their speech classroom. And then the bell will ring again and they'll go from their speech classroom to, you know, learn algebra, geometry. And uh, so on and so forth. So essentially what's happening is these students are being treated like a product in the assembly line. Every single day they go and they get loaded with bits of information uh, from each section of the line uh, on their, or all the particular classes. And at the end of that, what happens is you know, they go to the graduation ceremony, which is the final packaging stage, where we put them in a nice pretty you know, black robe and you know, uh, those ridiculous mortarboard hats. Uh, is some final like you know, packaging to the product before we send it out either for more refinement in college university or into the workforce to be immediately utilized. So if we examine this you know, as a concept of space, we see what Wolfe was talking about was true, that the way things are designed, and you know, students, again, Jim talked about in uh, one of the earlier lectures about how these aren't really even desks, they're you know, tables, they're chairs with small tables and something of a medieval torture device. <clears throat> these students go in, they, you know, they sit in their small defined area, and they're expected to take notes and memorize and do whatever the teacher tells them to do uh, to absorb the information that they're supposed to be getting. Now, if we examine this in terms of, you know, 
uh, but what they talked about it as far as space, we see again that this is, you know, really mirroring this industrial uh, assembly line factory model. And one other particular thing, and not, or not so much related to that, but in a little bit, we'll, uh, I'll discuss that in a second, uh, is this concept where he talks about, the, you know, the difference between work and non-work. And there's an advocacy that essentially... I don't know uh, when this was written, I believe, you know, uh, still many years ago, but he said, even given today's technology, we could automate production of everything we need. And therefore, everyone could sit around and be a philosopher, a doctor, or a, you know, do what you know, the Greeks called non-work. Um, and we would essentially make, you know, slaves and machines. Other than this being the precursor to The Matrix and, you know, Terminator and pretty much every you know, bad science fiction movie, now, this also probably wouldn't work out. You see, the people who are currently in the workforce are, uh, to steal a phrase from uh, Shawshank Redemption, they're essentially institutionalized into what they're doing. Uh, you know, they get up, they go to work, they punch in, they work at their job every day, they punch out, they go home, you know, do things with their family. And if we actually tried to replace these people with machines and encourage these people to go to other fields, I think there'd be a massive... You know, South Park, they took her jibs, you know, um, resistance to it. Be, and that is, again, because we've not taught these people to be uh, people in the education system, or really the work system. We've dehumanized and alienated them to the point where, you know, they, uh, Jim talked about this in the lecture, they think they like their job, and really what they're doing is they're liking being alienated and exploited. So, even if we could just wave a wand and say, okay, we're going to build factories to produce everything there, then you'd have all the manufacturing unions and, you know, anybody else in a production job would be just rioting in the streets because they would think that, you know, their jobs were being taken away and in reality they would be. So this is not a product of, or this is not a, a result of them being treated as people. This is a result of them going through this educational assembly line mentality in which they were not treated as people, not treated as, you know, capable of own, their own independent thought. They were treated more as uh, people who uh, more or less were treated as objects. We filled them with information, we gave them a purpose, they got a job, they're fulfilling that purpose, and if you take that purpose away, they're not going to be able to, I guess, evolve into the type of people that would be able to do the non-work. They are you know, the working class. And you know, I, I think you really saw this with the communist revolutions, uh, and, you know, just revolutions throughout history. You take the French Revolution, which is not particularly communist, but it was still an overthrow by the you know, working class of you know, the rich, of the elite. The working class overthrew the non-working class. And what happened? They started chopping people's heads off because they had money. You know, it, it was a response because people didn't really know what to do, and that's how it was so easy for Napoleon to take over. Same thing with you know, the rise of you know, Lenin and Stalin in communist Russia. It, it sounds really good on paper for us to liberate these people, but a lot of times people don't want to be liberated, and even if uh, we do, they don't know what to do with it. Uh, going back to the Shawshank Redemption, think of, um, gosh, I forget his name, the, the old man who you know, didn't want to leave and eventually ended up killing himself uh, because he had grown so accustomed to his life in prison and did not know how to function the outside world. And this is the you know the real problem with institutionalization is we have these people and we treat them as objects and then once they think of themselves as objects it's hard to treat them as people again we so alienated or so dehumanize them that they're not really even people anymore not in the sense of you know you and I who are you know critical thinkers and that's not to say they're less than us that's just to say this is the result of what's happened to them so all told you know I thought this was a very productive you know argument. And, uh, a couple of questions arising out of this would be: uh, Is it possible to you know move to this you know automation system and non-working, or would you have the rebellion, the they took your jibs thing I was talking about earlier, or does this need to be a subtle change? Do we need to change the nature of the educational system to you know abandon Freire's banking model and you know, get to his model of the liberated classroom where? Uh, and I know liberation is something they talked about at the very end. They told the elders they've been liberated. Uh, if we liberate students now, will a generation from now, where the older working class is either retired or died off, could we then move to that? Uh, these are the questions I've come up with, and you know, I definitely love to hear your answers. All right. Well, this is my first response to the fourth discussion. I had a really great time reading this, and look forward to uh, dialoguing with you guys further on it. Thanks.